All right, everyone, Lauren Southern got her borderless documentary Gestapoed the other day. Uh, she uploaded it to YouTube, and within 24 hours, it was disappeared, like it, like it became unavailable. Now, I'm not sure if she got a strike for it, or if it simply became unavailable as, as some sort of weird workaround that was applied by YouTube. Usually, they've got, like, it's a restricted video, like you have to be signed in, be 18 plus, or it's it's banned outright, or there's limited state. It gives them that wiggle room in the middle. But for this one, it just got disappeared, and I'm not sure if it was for the uh, normal strike process that actually applied here. I have not seen Borderless, although I can you know sort of roughly imagine what it probably is about. Um, and Lauren Southern has transitioned to making this particular brand of content. Before it was more on the live streaming end of, of specifically YouTube style content creation, now she's making documentaries. Um, I, I oppose any form of censorship of political material. And I can only guess that this is socio-political in nature, again, uh, just a wild guess there. Uh, but there's a link in the description uh, to the BitChute upload, actually, of Borderless. Uh, she, she made an emergency re-upload, and you have to do that for the exposure, because she's primarily, a lot of her audience is on YouTube. Uh, but she should be sharing out as well the BitChute variant, too. Um, and over time, if, if you're getting abused by the system, it's a terrible idea just to proliferate your material on mainstream sites that have a lot of, of ad network presence. Because those are the groups, they and the legacy media, that are harassing these groups. With alt tech, it's a little bit different. Because alt tech is literally in the same boat as the edgier independent content creators and is itself being abused. So they're not going to owe any loyalty to some advertiser and many of these sites don't even work with ad groups because they've been basically blacklisted. Uh, so I, I would say definitely share the BitChute link around as well. I will be watching it. I didn't have time. I was busy, kind of busy launching my official website the other day and <laughs> had a million other things to do. And the news cycle went haywire. It's like tomorrow we get the EU election results. And I think by tomorrow, I think it's late tonight, our time, that we're going to start seeing a trickle of results from the UK, which is what everyone's watching anyway. Um, but uh, Southern has had this problem before. She's been targeted for harassment before. Um, she's been kicked off of various platforms and had, you know, you know, she got banned on Patreon. She, that was the first big foreshock. One of the biggest foreshocks against an independent content creator really was her getting banned on Patreon, where they uh, made up the uh, useless term manifest observable behavior that they no longer use, specifically because they stretched beyond that. It was considered very amusing, I'm sure, in corporate boardrooms at the time. Extremely amusing. But uh, I support her work. I don't agree with all of her views, but I still support the work. And ultimately, she's still born out of this sort of frenzied tech generation of independent content creation. It's like, uh, and this happens a lot because a lot of the people that, you know, became big out of that and are still rising now, they have political beliefs that don't align with my own. Like as, as basically, uh, you know, I don't, I don't even know exactly what you would label my beliefs anymore. It's not exactly monarchism. Minarchism, by the way, not monarchism. Some people ask me when I became a monarchist and stuff like that. I, I'm not. Minarchy is basically softcore libertarianism, whereas ANCAP is hardcore. I'm a little bit more softcore than than the Night Watchman state at this point, but uh, you know, suppose I should probably flesh out those beliefs later. Uh, whereas Lauren Southern is more part of the new right. People just keep trying to cast her off as though she's a bitter, despicable, violent racist or something like that, and I I always get a chuckle because again, if you've made content and interacted with these other people, you see a side of them that I guess BuzzFeed doesn't want to portray, and you realize that they're not bitter and violent and despicable. Like you talk to them off camera or something like that is like totally different it's like no i don't i do not think that this person is going to take up a baseball bat shave their head uh tattoo a swastika on their arm and start beating up minorities i just don't think lauren southern really fits that description but buzzfeed disagrees maybe maybe she's going to join the white knights of the ku klux klan tomorrow i don't know but i just i don't get that feeling from her i think she's too busy making movies it's very funny when people who don't make anything are trying to criticize well like oh it's, they won't even watch it they'll watch like 2 minutes and say well it's talentless swill and BuzzFeed told me so. I can't wait until, like, the Slate article saying, oh, top ten lies uh, Lauren Southern tells in her new documentary. And they'll, you know, beat around the bush and, and use some weasel words in there and lie by structure, which they always do. Meanwhile, another video today is on a basically the rough counterpart to a Data Society report, only this time made about a bunch of left-wing journos and Antifa. Oh, you know those people that throw stuff at Lauren Southern and Malnu and all of these other creators over time uh, and abuse and harass people, but somehow they're not violent extremists at all. 
the people throwing rocks and actually hitting people with bike locks and stuff, that's not a hate group at all. No, the face of hate is someone with a webcam now, who, who says words as, as opposed to doing anything actionable. Very interesting how that works. Censorship is a very convoluted thing. That's it. When things don't make sense, it's because they're fucked up. They're not true. You know, to paraphrase Judge Judy there, I happen to agree with that phrase, and I'm not really a Judge Judy fan. She just rubs me the wrong way. Although I think she's probably sweet to people in her personal life. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe she's a total slave driver in her own home as well, and she really rules the roost. Uh, with her amount of money, I can imagine she does. But uh, Lauren Southern shouldn't be disappeared off of YouTube and have her die. I mean, it looks like it wasn't even given a strike, so I'm wondering why it would suddenly become unavailable in the first place. It doesn't appear to have been put in limited state, so it's like, you know, is there a new fourth category of suppression? YouTube doesn't want to get into a dust-up with you, so it doesn't give you a strike, it just keeps you from putting something there? Or it could have been a technical glitch, but then it's like, Team YouTube doesn't respond. You know, you're supposed to be able to tweet at them and generally get a response. I can't imagine that they're that overwhelmed that they wouldn't be able to, in a timely manner, say, yeah, it's a glitch, or, you know, no, it was, it's a strike, or something like that. I don't understand that quite. I think it's by design. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, we, whoops, uh, we got caught censoring some material. It's like, I wish YouTube would stop doing that because I do like YouTube as a platform. It makes it very difficult to imagine a continued future on a platform when you see that they are consistently engaging in a pattern of behavior that is abusive towards its own independent content creators. And Lauren Southern's a larger creator. She's a, a shit ton of subscribers. So, you know, people with large audiences are being continuously harassed. What does that say for people that don't have the protection of having a lot of fans uh, or, or a big audience to back them up? Then it's a totally different story altogether as well. That's about all. Peace out.